conference match of the year. The Rebels at home at eight and three overall. Those three losses all came in the Rebel Invitational in the opening weekend. Tennessee six and four. Winners of three straight service over the net. We're underway, and it'll be an early point for Ole Miss as Liam Mulkey goes up and pushes that ball to the floor on the overpass. And then comes up a little limp and gives the thumbs up, but she's still continuing to walk off that potential ankle roll, maybe. Not probably the first point either team really wanted. Liam Mulkey with a little bit of a, a tweak of her ankle there. Tessa Grubbs, not the pass. Tennessee would have wanted to start with. Lady Vols answer quickly. Ava Bell, we mentioned the North Carolina transfer, averaging almost two kills per set. Also hitting 5 of 23 in this young season. Madison Coulter, the libero for Tennessee, she'll be serving. Challenging Emily Stroud for the back line. Bars will go outside to the freshman Anna Bear. She's dug up by Mahaffey. And Andrino in the middle is blocked by the Rebels. This one grubs first kill of the evening as she finds space before the back line. Stroud kind of hesitating there before going to play the ball. That's not a bad idea, except she sucked into the floor a little bit there, Seth. So she's not quite as aware of where that back line is. Needs to be a little bit more picky about what balls she lets go, uh, go past her. Coulter is a fiery libero. She'll be... A treat to watch again tonight. Serves it to Strout. Bars will go back outside to Bear. Goes cross court. That one rolled through the hands of Coulter for the first kill for Anna Bear, the freshman out of St. Louis. A two-time freshman of the week in the Southeastern Conference. That's a fantastic way to welcome yourself to collegiate volleyball. It certainly is, and she's got a player in front of her like Emily Strout to kind of show her the ropes and, again, take a little bit of that pressure off of her, allowing her to just do what she does naturally and let herself evolve as a player in the Southeastern Conference. This will be Grubbs, and she'll just dunk that one to the floor. 3-2 Lady Vols. Smart play there by Grubbs. Warnell a little bit late into the middle, excuse me, into the outside for that block. Grubbs exposed in the middle of the floor for the Rebels. Grubbs 6-3 out of take a case. South Carolina, honorable mention, All-American a season ago. We'll see a lot of sets going the way of number 17. Slide coming from Warnell. It's off the shoulder of Hanson, but it won't come back over the net point. Ole Miss. That's a smart swing by Warnell. Doesn't have a ton of pace on it, but just enough, and it's very well placed. She knew what the block was giving her. Swinging cross court like that one, you're going to take either your setter out of rotation or more often than not, setters are just not anticipating having to play defense already releasing in a free ball type scenario to the net to set. That was a dipping serve from Lauren Thompson, the sophomore from Arkansas. We'll miss a chance offensively. Strout tips, takes the setter out. Near side swing popped up for a moment by Thompson, but Grubb starting this night out hot. Another kill for number 17. Nice bump set, pass set by Coulter there. One foot straddling the 10-foot line. Anytime the libero is in front of the 10-foot line, they have to play the ball with their platform. You mentioned it earlier, Brittany, but... Grubbs not a six rotation outside. Tennessee with a wealth of defensive specialists, and they'll allow Lily Feltz to come in and play the back row for their senior. Rebels on the attack now. Strout, powerful swing to tie things up at four. Nice offensive movement by the Rebels. Odin Part to Lauren Bars, setter, recognizing that the middle's late. The middle's late. Warnell does a good job of pulling the middle out there to the right pin. Strout was up on the left pin and pretty much has free reign of wherever she wants to swing. Emily Strout from Fargo, North Dakota. Led the SEC in kills a season ago, was second in the nation. She'll have another chance here. Set goes into the middle of Seltemeyer. It's picked up by the Lady Vols. Here's a near side swing from Morgan Fingal. Freshman from Fairfax, Virginia, getting involved in the action here in set number one. And a left-handed right side, something that Ole Miss, I don't want to say isn't used to seeing, but if you're going to see a left-handed player, typically they're on the right side of the floor, but at whatever the national statistic, 10% of the population is left-handed. It's just not very common, and they're harder to block, truly. Couple joust at the net. That ball popped up. Shrout comes in and puts it on the floor. Great swing by Straub, a little bit overzealous there. Swinging into the net, the point will go to the Vols. 
So a point for Ole Miss. Stroud putting on a showcase of what she can do, just not within the legality of the sport of volleyball. That's illegal. It's not nice to do to somebody, but that rejection will count as a point for the Lady Vols. Huge block from Mahaffey there. Depends on who you ask. <laughs> not nice if you're Soltemeyer running out of the middle, but that is about as textbook as you can get with a block. Up and over both hands, grabbing the ball as soon as it comes out of the offensive player's hands. Mahaffey's been impressive this season for the Lady Vols. Final result, and a kill for the Rebels. The up goes off the near side antenna. Rebels down by two here in the first set. Not a bad dig by Andrino. She's a, a front row player by nature. She goes out whenever it comes time after she serves. She's not a back row player or serve receive player in that sense, but she does a really nice job on defense. I wouldn't be surprised to see her kind of move into a six rotation player as her career continues. It's gonna be fun to watch Bell as she continues to get settled in Knoxville. Sophomore from Austin, Texas. Already with a couple kills in this one. Six foot two middle. Making things difficult, and it's something we talk about a bunch. Those new faces that come in, there's no real tape outside of this season on them. So she's going to have her way, testing some things out, trying different things. And so far, it's been an absolutely successful season for number 20 in Orange. That can be a little bit daunting in a way to know that you can sort of reinvent yourself and have all of these different opportunities in front of you. But I think grounding yourself, being able to go out and say, okay, I, I do these three or four things well, or these one or two things really well, and focus on that gives you the opportunity to hone your skills in those areas. Miscommunication for Tennessee, point for the Rebels there within one. Ole Miss 0-3 against Iowa State, UCF, and Rice to begin the year. Those end up being three great RPI losses. It's amazing to look back and say, Rice, the biggest loss of the season so far, a team that went and then beat Texas. I think it just goes to show, Seth, you never know exactly how a match is going to pay off come, you know, mid-November, whenever the committee starts looking at RPI wins and losses. So it's important to go out and play your very best because a team like Rice could go in the next week or towards the end of the season and have a couple big RPI wins themselves. So it only helps you, even if you lose, to, to play your best. Rolled by Straup out of the back row. That'll be an attack from Sedona Hanson, the setter of the week in the SEC, also the player of the week. Colder, great effort to keep it alive. Then a block by the Rebels. Second ball, third now. Slammed into the blocking hands of Mulkey by Tessa Grubbs. Really a heads-up play by Grubbs there. Not a lot of offensive opportunity with the way things were coming off the block there. Great coverage by the Vols, but it's just a, a smart play, a heads-up play, and something that I think that you only see really in, in more veteran players because they have been around the game long enough to recognize I don't have to swing hard here to get a point. Grubbs again, deep swing, touch called, another point for Tennessee. They push ahead by four. Another example there, not pushing into the block, swinging high hands. Probably, I would say that's maybe 60% arm swing for her, but it's effective because she's smart, recognizes that she doesn't have to swing straight down. Use that's a block. big swing for Mana Bear. And that rotation for Tennessee. Laid on the block, the Lady Bowls. Bear doing a really good job of seeing the block before she, go, before she goes up and exposing that hole in the defense. Purcell with the second ball off her forearms. This one's Bear again. Leads to an overpass. Warnell goes up with Bell, and Warnell comes away the winner. Maybe a little bit of that experience catching up with Bell, going up against a player like Nia Warnell. A tough play for Bell, regardless with that ball coming over her shoulder, but Warnell recognizing she's got to be the last one to touch the ball in that joust situation if she wants to win the point. Incredible adjustment from the senior Grubbs, and she'll put it on the floor for another Tennessee point. You mentioned the adjustment, Seth. That's a really, it's completely out of frame on the screen. A really high ball coming from the setter there all the way, corner to corner. 
Averages over four kills per set. Already it's six halfway through this first set. Fair cross court dug up by the libero Poulter. This is Grubbs again. The answer from Purcell who leads the SEC in digs per set. Tennessee goes from line to line. Bars takes the second ball. Here's Mulkey and she's blocked by Tessa Grubbs. A great job responding defensively. The Vols kind of a scramble play there. Started with Coulter playing the ball up, then Grubbs setting it all the way across the net. Kind of a scramble play. Defense gets itself together there, and you can see on the screen just pressing right back to the middle of the floor. Mulkey swinging into the block. Didn't have a lot of options of where to go. Four big hands in front of her. Back to Coulter serving for Tennessee. This will be Anna Bear. She goes through the block. Gets the touch call from the line judge on her sideline. Would have missed the line as far as depth goes. It's smart to utilize the fingertips of the Tennessee near side block. Sometimes all it takes is just, just the finger's breadth of, of a player's hand touching the ball to change the trajectory. I mean, it, it, all it has to do is just clip that line. Bear goes line. That one's not coming back. Rebels within two. Love a good line shot from the outside. All confidence as Bear goes up. She knows where she wants to swing. Nice high reach, high snap, execute flawlessly. Hanson going outside to Grubbs. That's another kill. Beautiful set by the senior setter as well, who will head to the back line to serve for Tennessee. A good block set up by Bars, truly. Warnell doing a nice job to close there. Can maybe take up a little bit more room, but when you're up against a player like Tessa Grubbs, sometimes that's all it is. You just have to go and take away an area and force her to swing around you. Warnell tips. Hansen gets to the second ball, comes near side to Fingal. She goes right off the chest of Stroud. 15 11. Tennessee leads it here in set number one. That'll lead to a media timeout here at the Gillum Center. We'll be right back with the rest of the action here at set number one. Set one between Ole Miss and Tennessee here at the Gillum Center in Oxford. The Lady Balls on top, 15-11. The player of the week in the SEC, center of the week, senior Sedona Hansen at the back line, 5'8", out of Wrightwood, California. 11.67 assists per set in the Tennessee Classic. She was named tournament MVP. Also the highest average as far as assists per set go in the Eve Rackham era. Fingal on the near side got blocked by the Rebels. This one's popped up in the air off hands. Warnell forced a tip on the slide. A chance for the Vols. Grubbs throws it down. It's popped up with a chicken wing by Lauren Bars, but it's not going to come back over for Tennessee. Another kill for the senior Grubbs. Really seeing her level of play evolve from even junior to senior season sets. She's I feel like we see this a lot. Emily Straup, another classic example of a player getting smarter, not necessarily hitting harder, just hitting better. Hanson remains at the back line, serving. Bear goes cross court. This will be Fingal misfiring on the right side. Point for the Rebels. 20 of firepower for Tennessee almost will have to continue the trend of leading the SEC in digs. 15.97 digs per set, best in the league with Avery Bug, Nicole Purcell, and then Lauren Thompson, who enters in the back row to play. This one will be dug up by the Rebels. Straup on the near side, double block, no problem. She goes off the hands of Andrino, tooling that for a kill, 16-13. A tool exactly like you said. It's to, to just further my thought, I guess. I'm impressed by Grubbs and Strout because they're players that are recognizing I don't have to reinvent the wheel here. I don't have to go up and swing my absolute hardest at every ball in order to get a point. I can save a little bit of that energy, swing when it's more appropriate. 
Strop again, getting the Rebels within three. Timeout taken by the Lady Vols. It's exciting. You'll be ready when the SEC play starts. That's one of the most important things I think coaches face in the SEC is making sure they schedule tough enough, but not too tough. Like we mentioned, we want to have key losses, quality losses. That's what the committee is going to look for, quality wins, quality losses. And Ole Miss doing a good job scheduling in that way. But as you mentioned, Seth, every team in the conference really setting a nice preseason turn, excuse me, nice preseason part of the season up. Tennessee's losses come to Illinois to start the year. Baylor and then Cincinnati, a team that might come out of the American Athletic Conference. This will be Straub. Goes off the blocking hands of Andrino. Coulter's second ball out to Mahaffey. The Cincinnati native looking for a kill. Andrino will take that over pass and put it down easily. 18-14 Lady Vols. Feltz was on the all freshman team a season ago in the SEC. She'll serve in place of Tessa Grubbs. Second ball from Hanson pushes Thompson to the corner. Straub again cuts it across court, challenging Mahaffey, but it's dug up with a chance to return it. Purcell to Bars, the second ball. And that is how you throw one to the floor on a second ball if you're a setter. Love to see an active setter. There's maybe been one or two other opportunities where as a player, as a coach, I would have loved to have seen the setters more active, but I think that's what makes both setters on either side of the floor so effective is because they're very selective with the balls that they do choose to play. Here's Mahaffey. Dug up by Avery Bug, the sophomore from North Carolina, third. Ball swung at by Straup into the net, so a point for the Lady Balls. Played a 25 here in the first four sets. Fourth set if needed, of course. Win by two. So Tennessee trying to push ahead six more points to take the first game here on the road in the first night of SEC play. Andrino serving. Brings the bell back into the front row for the Lady Balls. Her and Hansen not on the same page there. Looked as though Bell almost thought about swinging at that second ball. Saw Hansen come crashing in. Still got the set. But that changed the approach there. First ball came tight to the net. That's Mahaffey, and that's a kill. 2016 Lady Vols here in game number one. Kind of an odd swing by Mahaffey. It looked like she, there would be more power behind the ball. I think she, she probably didn't contact it as well as she had intended to. Obviously, a kill is a kill. Straub answers with a kill of her own. Trying to keep Ole Miss alive here in this first set. Straub with four kills here in the first set, right around her average on the season. Here's an attack from Mahaffey, splits the difference. Going between Bars and Straub, 21-17 Tennessee. A little bit tough to time is Mahaffey. Not the best lineup job by Mulkey there. Back one to Sultemeyer, and she'll get a kill here in the first set. The sophomore out of Fredericksburg, Texas. Showing her seniority. Lauren Bars, that's a really smart set selection, recognizing that Bell's a little bit uncertain of which way she's going to go. Bars has her choice of setting out to Bear, would have been a good option as we've seen previously in this match. She chooses to go a back one to Saltemeyer. That's just a communicated play. Saltemeyer, 1.52 kills per set, also averages just a hair under one block per set defensively. Grubbs dug up for a moment. That's kill number 10 here in set number one. Pure dominance from the senior. 
Take a look at these numbers, Brittany. 10 kills on a 769 hit percentage. No errors. Excuse me. Errors for Tessa Grubb. And just as you say it, on the outside, that one won't result in a point for Tennessee. Instead, the Ole Miss tries to inch back in it, down by three. That one error, though, not going to do too much to that 769 clip. 643 is still pretty strong for Tessa Grubbs. Here's Avery Bug. Hansen goes back out to her senior, and that's Faith. And we're not even through the first game of this match. You know, it do doesn't always follow, Seth, that you're going to have a setter of the week and an offensive player of the week on the same team. But typically, I mean, it makes sense. The way a setter gets an assist, it has to end. Uh, the, the resulting play has to end in a kill. Tessa Grubbs is putting up those numbers. It would follow. But the setter of the week would also be from the same squad. And last weekend at the Tennessee Classic, the first time all season that the Lady Vols ran the 5-1. Worked pretty well. They hit 399 as a team. Defense also working for Tessa Grubbs. And why not? When you're playing so well offensively, use that confidence on the defensive end, and good things might happen. She's tall, and she's built. Honestly, if you just look at Tessa, you might think, can she produce offensively? Because she's very tall. Not that she doesn't have to jump, but she's a very tall player, so blocking might be what her forte is. Trouble's oh, not dead yet here in set number one as Anna Bear picks up another kill, her fifth of the evening. She also yet to have an error in this match. 24-20, another timeout will be taken by the Lady Vols. Up those assist numbers. 16 assists already, again, averaged over 11 last weekend at the Tennessee Classic, and again, she was named the MVP of that tournament and Player of the Week in the Southeastern Conference. Lauren Thompson at the service line, trying to go on a bit of a run for the Rebels. They trail 24-20. Put side out, led to a Lady Vols timeout. See what they have drawn up offensively here out of the break. Hanson on the slide to Andrino. Big swing, a second kill for Andrino. That one will end the set. The Lady Vols come into Oxford, rolling in a three-match win streak, and they take game what they accomplished in 2018. They had just four that season. But now they're looking for that first win at home, and boy, it would be a statement to do it against Tennessee. Seth Austin, Brittany McLaughlin ready for set number two here at the Gillum Center. Danielle Mahaffey serving for the Lady Vols, pushes Purcell to the back line. That's Warnell out of the middle, plenty of room before the line. one nothing Rebels. There's Barr setting Strap out of the back row. Didn't see much of that in the first set. Second ball taken by Pelazon and sent over by Tennessee. There's a slide coming from Warnell. It's 2 nothing. a courtesy of the senior from Dickinson, Texas. Great swing by Warnell. And you mentioned, Seth, not seeing a whole lot of Emily Straup out of the back row. It's because of plays like that. When Ole Miss has been in system, that's the setter at the net with as many options setting-wise as she wants. Lauren Bars is able to go up and kind of choose, and so she's been able to keep the ball at the net, not having to utilize Straup in the back row. Quick kill there from Bell. She'll check out. Powered that one to the floor, making it 2-1. to one. Entered the match hitting 523 in the Southeastern Conference. That's tops in the league. She introduces herself to league play for the first time. That's a roof of a block, and Andrino lets the crowd know it. Andrino. 
four big hands up. I love the way she responds to just silent, serious. Swagger. About <laughs> swagger. She's about it. Three S's for Alyssa Andrino. Big answer from Warnell. All three kills this set have come from number 16. Tennessee hasn't found an answer for her yet. Talks about Ole Miss having to have needing, really, a balanced offense. You have two strong outsides, but that's not enough. Bar is a little active. Pretty, pretty typical for her. One or two balls per set. She's going to try and send over the net, throw over the net. First service error of the evening for Ole Miss comes from Lauren Thompson. The team with just one so far. Good discipline from both of these teams. It's three to three here, and Tennessee's got a back row center in Sedona Hansen. She'll be taken out of the set here. This is a big swing on the outside. From Fingal. She thought she got a touch. No response from the officials. Eve Rackham up off the bench. She'll pick up the challenge card and we'll be taking a look at this attack from the freshman on the right side. Find the hands of Lauren Bars. You cannot interrupt a settable ball in the front row, and that's what the official is saying Andrino did. It looks as though now, just judging by the off-screen motions by the up official. You have to wait to play the ball until it's within the plane of the net. That is half the ball on each side of a, that imaginary sheet of glass plane, whatever you want to call it, going up from the net, saying Andrino went over and played the ball before it had come into contact with that, again, visible plane. Great response by the freshman single there. Going up and pushing that one down. Couldn't be returned by Ole Miss, getting the Lady Balls within one. Here's Lily Feltz, the sophomore from Knoxville, Tennessee. Second ball taken by Coulter. This will be Fingal on the right side. And again, she fires it wide of the area inside that corner. So Ole Miss pushes ahead by two here in set number two. Drops game one, 25 to 20. And going right side to Fingal, another kill for the freshman. The angle Fingal is swinging at the ball is something that you will never see replicated on the right side from a right-handed player. That, that thumb down arm swing, moving her entire body away from the ball is something that is very, very hard to block, even the best in the country, because it's, it, it's something, one, you don't see, but it's... It's an angle that you can't you can't really perceive in your head. Just thinking back as an outside player, you, you, you can't move along the net very well to block that ball. That's another attacking oh, error oh, by oh, the Lady Balls. This time, Mahaffey. Ole Miss ahead seven to five here in game two. And the Bear checks back in for Ole Miss. Emily Straub heads the back line to do these serving honors for the Rebels. 3.74 kills per set, 2.67 digs. And this time it's Sultemeyer crossing that plane and interrupting Sedona Hansen's chance at setting the middle. Bear misfires on the outside for the Rebels. Her second attacking error it leads the way for Ole Miss. Five kills so far. We're all tied up at seven here in game number two. Palazon serving for the Lady Vols. This is Sultemeyer out of the middle. A net violation is the call, giving the point to Ole Miss. Point to Ole Miss. Net violations, 
really hitting errors, but service errors as well are, are three places I think, I mean, I can't speak conclusively on behalf of Tennessee, but I, I know that Ole Miss has cleaned those things up in the preseason. And it's not uncommon to see that, but I think it just forces, what it does really is it, it forces you to have to earn your points then. Big hole on the Ole Miss defense. Mahaffey finds it. Four kills for Danielle Mahaffey here in this one. Here's Avery Buck serving for the Rebels, the sophomore from Mooresville, North Carolina, prepped at Cardinal Gibbons. Last season, played in five sets against the Lady Vols, had nine digs through those two contests. Bell blocked on the far side. That's Anna Bear and Naya Warnell. Warnell who moved into fourth all time with over 300 blocks at Ole Miss. She knows a thing or two about getting up. She definitely does, and a really nice job there by Warnell, tracking the ball all the way. In favor of Ole Miss. Seth Austin, Brittany McLaughlin here in the Magnolia State on this Friday evening. First match in SEC play for both of these squads. Two teams looking to get conference play started on the right foot. Anna Bear, her first ever SEC match, and she's leading the way with six kills. I think some in the way that Ole Miss scheduled not just prepares, you know, the, the whole team, but it allows your incoming freshmen, especially those who start, to kind of get an idea of what to expect and how they'll have to perform for the duration of conference play. Right side attack from Ava Bell. Bear again goes off hands, it's popped up. Second ball was called off by Pelazon, and then she never got there. Right idea by Pelazon calling for that ball. Would allow your setter to step back and then play the second ball, keeping you in system. Call it though, kind of need to go for it. Strong and Ole Miss pushes ahead by five here in game two. <laughs> Tessa Grubbs again, another attacking error. Didn't say that but once or twice in the first set. Timeout. Timeout time taken by 28 and Red. They're going to be in good shape. It's something that they've been missing. Consistent play outside of Emily Straup. And Anna Bear not only looks like a consistent player, but a superstar in the making. She really does, and we've talked about it before, how she's got the ability to kind of go under Emily Straup's wing and sort of see how it's done, how she has to perform week in and week out in the SEC in order to maintain relevance, for lack of a better term, to, to, to stay on people's scouting reports. Averaging 3.29 kills per set here in her freshman season. Again, Grubbs looking for a touch, gets the call. They will side out and get the service back to the Lady Vols. That's the 12th kill of the match for number 17. Had 45 kills in three matches at the Tennessee Classic. Bar's attack is picked up by Tennessee, and here's Grubbs going cross court. Great effort by the senior, Nicole Purcell. Roll shot, Anna Bear leads to an overpass, and she goes up and snaps. She might have bounced that ball on the two-foot line, give or take. 
obviously hyped afterwards and rightfully so. What I'm more impressed by is the fact that she stayed out of the net. She had a player going up with her on the Tennessee side, and that ball really didn't cross very far onto Ole Miss's side of the net. Nice job, Ann Bear. What about SEC plays intimidating Anna Bear here tonight? I don't see it, and I think that kind of goes back to Emily Straub sort of leading the way for her, showing her at least a little bit, hey, it, it, you can be comfortable out here. Let's do this thing together. You don't have to feel like you need to shoulder this kind of second, you know, this 0-2 position, this second outside position um, by yourself. But I'm just leaving you kind of stranded here. Tennessee gets the serve back. They'll have a back row setter in Hanson. Hanson will have Andrino, Fengel, and Grubbs across the front. Bars has Warnell in the middle. She'll tip it. This will be Fingal on the right side. Off hands. Purcell will be there. Second ball. Bars on the slide to Warnell. Another tip. It goes off the tape, and Andrino pops it up. Quick approach from Grubbs, and Bug is there. This will be Emily Strout. Far side. Cross court dug up by Coulter. Back and forth we go. The back row attack by Mahaffey. Too strong, and the point belongs to Ole Miss. We saw a lot of rallies similar to that way back, way back around Labor Day, Ole Miss's first tournament. It's it's rallies like that against teams like UCF and, and Rice that prepare you for rallies like this against a ranked Tennessee team. Sixteen eleven in favor of Ole Miss. This will be Lily Feltz. Feltz had 10 digs and set, excuse me, nine sets played last weekend in Knoxville at the Tennessee Classic. Sultemeyer's turn on the slide, dug up by Tennessee. Fingal powers it through the block on the far side. Everything we've said about Anna Bear, we can say about Morgan Fingal. She's been on fire as well. I said it before, but I love a left-handed right. I love a left-handed hitter in general. It's kind of like left-handed quarterbacks, left-handed pitchers. There's just something about watching a player who's left-handed play that looks obviously different than a right-handed player, but their, their mechanics tend to be better. And I think we see that with Fingal. She's a very technically sound player, and it shows by the results she gets on the floor. Tennessee within three, a timeout taken by Stephen McRoberts and the Rebels. That in the conference, she's going to be a player that is going to, what we're going to need to keep tabs on. She's going to be someone we want to watch because of the way she plays. It's going to set her apart. Goes back to talking about how good the juniors and high school circuit these players are playing on nowadays. That you can have players with such high volleyball IQ. They're always so good and talent like that exists everywhere. But can you take that kind of talent and exhibit it in the SEC the way Morgan Fingal is? I think that, you, I mean, you, you tagged on it a bit, Seth. The junior circuit, for those unfamiliar, it's just uh, club volleyball. Stiz is kind of the, the layman's term for it. It's volleyball outside of your high school season. It's a, it's a travel team, and it's such, it, it's at a level in the country where coaches are going, and, and I know just from my time being on staff, that you're looking at players that are maybe in eighth grade, maybe in ninth grade, just to see how they evolve, because if they're smart at that age, they're probably only going to get smarter. Heck of a rally between the two clubs here. Point going to Ole Miss. Eve Rackham up off the bench. She was quick to ask for a lift on a play. Emily Strout was able to up a ball on a block. Staff quick to give that signal for a lift, and she's still trying to plead her case on the sideline. The rally ended with a Shot past the back line. Rebels lead 17-14. Oh boy, you can't cut that ball much better. But a, a replay coming, I do believe. Now ball off the shoe of Leah Mulkey on the near side. Quick whistle will lead to a replay of the point. Initially, that looked to be one of the best Attacks we had seen from Fingal, and we had seen some good ones. She cut that one down the net, but a quick whistle. You can play that first ball up off your foot. Your foot, your fingernail, your elbow, your forehead. That attack by Fingal's dug up. 
Stroud will track this one over the shoulder and tip, taking Hanson out. Mahaffey rolls one into the net, and the point belongs to the Rebels. One thing head coach Eve Rackham has, has been motioning on the sideline is every number that they feel of plays that have gone either to a replay or have been missed calls. Most recently, she's held up four fingers, and that's the disparity in score right now. 18-14, Ole Miss. And Ace from the Rebels pushes them ahead, 19-14. That's the first ace of the evening for either team, and Lauren Bars has a big smile on her face after it. She'll pop this one over as well, challenging Feltz. Right side swing by Fingal, dug up, it's over. Feltz, Hansen, Andrino blocked by Saltemeyer. Fingal, off fingertips, kept alive by Lauren Bars. Strout tips. Coulter, right side to Fingal. Powers it through the block, another kill for the freshman. You talk about a spread offense for Ole Miss. We're seeing that with the Vols tonight as well. We mentioned Tessa Grubbs, Tessa Grubbs. That, that was the name we kept saying. Here in set number two, it's Fingal. Really performing well tonight. The overpass put away. She's going to get fed a lot the remainder of the season. Sedona Hansen continues to set this team well in the 5-1. 23 assists, 12 digs. Already has a double-double, and we're not through the second set of play. Hansen, one of the best in Tennessee history when it comes to the double-double. 52 in her career now. She's third in Lady Vols program history. This will be Andrino serving for Tennessee. Lauren Thompson takes the first ball. Strout the attack on the outside, popped up by the setter bars. This will be Strout again. Adjust, put some power behind it. It's dug up by Tennessee. Dunk of a swing here by Mahaffey. Gets the Lady Vols within two. You can tell that's something Tennessee definitely practices is that it's not a throw. I don't mean that in the technical sense, but they are throwing the ball down. It's not just a tip. They are able to push. That's the best word. They're able to push the ball with force to the middle of the floor or to a deep corner or like we've seen Tessa Grubbs do in the first set, maybe once or twice here in the second, pushing that ball off of hands for a tool. Attacking error from Emily Straub. Tennessee not going away. They're within one. They look at the attacking errors between these two teams. Tennessee, 16 free points on the attack. Ole Miss just eight. They can't keep tacking onto that total, or Tennessee's going to take over in this set. The serve finds Saltemeyer in the first pass, and then a net violation on Ole Miss ties the setup at 19. Steve McRoberts up quickly with the green challenge card. There will not be a challenge coming. It appears as though it was Addison Rowe in the net for Tennessee. But then Andrino says, no challenge, no problem. The ace puts the Lady Vols on top, 20 to 19. One of the most decisive ways you can answer, especially when there's been kind of a pause in the momentum. The only thing you can control entirely in the game of volleyball is your serve. Nice job by Andrino. 6-0 run for Tennessee. Straub snaps the point streak for the Lady Balls and ties the set up at 20. This is going to be a fun set to watch for the finish, Brittany. Always exciting in the SEC. Even though Tennessee ranked higher preseason than Ole Miss, any dog, any day. Drop in the back row. Belts the first pass. Here's Hansen going to Fingal. And she's rejected by Anna Bear. 21 20 Ole Miss.
a one-on-one -on -one situation. Bear doing a good job of adjusting her block there. Moves out, which is not typically what you would think. Moves out for that left-handed player. A knuckling serve from Straub, 22-20. Rebels lead it after the ace. Straub's eighth service ace of the season. Ole Miss tries to continue to push ahead to 25. Another ace from Straub, 23-20 Ole Miss. The wheels falling off the bus a little bit here. No aces, then Ole Miss with three. And Hanson and the Lady Vols answer. Mahaffey, it's kept alive. Nobody can get to the second ball. A great side out from Tennessee if they want to stay alive in this set. That's an excellent swing. A nice effort, too, by Purcell. The ball really dug high enough. I think just the speed and the positioning. Uh, Lauren Bars didn't really have a good route to the ball with Saltemeyer transitioning off the net. Off the tape goes Palazon. And Bear puts it on the floor. Set point coming for the Rebels. Fans on their feet at the Gillum Center as Ole Miss tries to respond after losing the first game 25 to 20. Can they even things up heading into game three? The senior libero, Nicole Purcell at the back line. Almost another ace for the Rebels, the attack from Mahaffey, finds the line. Great tip there from the sophomore. And she'll head to the back line to serve for Tennessee. She almost really didn't tip that ball. It just looked like the trajectory of it. She kind of helped it over the net. Smart play. And a bear, a roll shot, Palazon there. Tessa Grubbs tries to go through the block. It's dug up by Straub. This will be Bear again. She'll go cross court. Coulter is there. Out of the back row, Mahaffey. It's popped up by Nicole Purcell, but not for long. Tennessee trying to fight back into this set. They trail 23-24. Seen a couple really nice plays by the Rebel libero, Nicole Purcell, and White on your screen. She's made excellent touches, just not quite high enough and or slow enough for a second contact to be made by the Rebels. Bear again, down the line. Popped up. Free ball coming for the Rebels. First ball taken by Stroud. Bars the second. Bear dug up by Mahaffey. Incredible rally. Dig by Stroud. It goes off the roof and then an overpass. Addison Rowe blocked by Warnell. This will be Grubbs. Powers through the block. We're all tied up at 24. Really nice offensive ball movement by Tennessee, and a faster set, a little bit faster set out to Tessa Grubbs. I like, I was a little bit uncertain about it. She's a taller player. Sometimes it can be hard to catch up with her height to the pace of the ball and still get your full vertical approach out of it, but she does a really nice job there getting that kill. 3-0 run from the Lady Vols. Reminder, win by two. It's 24-24. Anna Bear, the tip. Mahaffey won't get there. Rebels push ahead by one. I'm glad that worked out for Anna Bear. I don't love to see a tip, especially at a 24-24 situation when you need the points, but very well placed there. It'll be Avery Bug serving for Ole Miss. Top 10 in aces here this season. Challenging Mahaffey. Second ball to Hanson. A swing by Grubbs. No touch finds the red paint. We're all tied up at one game apiece. A great response for that. I think that is the demands physically on your body, but you also have to, I mean, I think it, it, it might be underestimated, the demands mentally, just keeping up with the game, but then you have to balance classes on top of that, maintaining some sort of a social life. There's lots of aspects that change outside of volleyball. Maybe the level of play, we mentioned club balls, juniors, JUCO, AAUs, whatever it is these girls are into before they come to college. That's, that, that's one thing, and you can kind of turn it off whenever the tournament's done, but the duration of this season is a long one, and that can be hard to adjust to.
Correction on Sedona Hansen. Her 52nd career double double puts her a second in program history. I said she was third, but as she picked up another one here already in this match, she moves into second all time. She's also trying to become a member of the 2500 assist 1000 dig club. Keep an eye on those dig numbers throughout the rest of this season as well for number 11 as she heads to the back line to serve. Always nice to see a setter picking up digs defensively, not, you know, kind of shunning that responsibility to the side. You're, you've got to be a defensive player first before you set the ball. Attack error from Bear. 3-1 Lady Vols early on in game number three. Hansen entered today's match needing 32 digs to get to that 1,000 dig mark. Lornell picked up there, and then Bear puts it away. Rebels within one early on. That's two net plays. Two net plays for Anna Bear, where she really just looks in control. That one a little bit further off the net, but the tendency can be sometimes when the ball's off the net that you have to swing harder, and it goes down the front of the tape. Tessa Grubbs, another kill for the senior. Had 11 in the first set, has 14, excuse me, now 15 with that one. Tennessee leading four to two. Lauren bars the attack, a great effort by Coulter. Mahaffey unable to put it away as Bug picks it up. Cross-court swing from Straub. Second ball is reached by Hansen. Another block by the Rebels. Here's Mahaffey again, a quick approach. Purcell does what she can to pop that one up. Straub goes down the line. No touch, does not find the line. A point for Tennessee. Ole Miss appeared to do everything right there except put the ball on the floor. Tennessee leading it 5-2. Ole Miss will challenge the call on the play. Challenge by Stephen McRoberts here. I think he's challenging the touch, saying that there was a touch by Fingal, I suppose. Lady Vols won the first set 25-21. Ole Miss bounced back on 26-24 in game two. And now the Lady Vols come out in game number three, and they are rolling 7-2 to the score. A really, really good job. They don't, they don't swing block. Tennessee doesn't swing block, which th that's just a coach's preference. Some coaches prefer it, some don't. But I think what I like about Tennessee, excuse me, they, they did swing block there. One-on-one um, -on -one situations where they're not swing blocking is they're having a lot more success, I think, lining up with their hitter. Drop goes cross court. Feltz is there. A roll shot by Mahaffey. This third ball has to go over from Bug, and it does. Hansen into the middle to Andrino. Touched by the Rebels. Another kill for the senior, Alyssa Andrino. Great pop up there by Fingo. We talk about volleyball IQ. She's been all over it tonight. And then Andrino. So a freshman keeps it alive, and the senior puts it away. It's all Tennessee here in set number three. They lead it eight to two. Can do something with it. That's the response that Ole Miss needed. Straub hitting that previous play down the front of the net. Obviously, that's not what you want, but kind of at this point, you're sort of hitting the meat of the third set here, and this is really going to gear you up. We're playing four minimum with each team having won one set already this match. How about the response from Tennessee? We talked about Ole Miss getting together after losing set one, bouncing back, taking the set. 
But the Lady Vols, a tournament team a season ago, get together after dropping set number two, and this is how they came out of it. 10 to three, the score here in the third set. I would expect nothing less, and if I'm on the coaching staff, that's exactly what I would expect my players to do, kind of. All right, you know, we, we, we get that one set, now it's done. The expectation, truly the expectation, is that we go out and perform how we're capable of performing, worry about our side of the floor, both teams, keep it on their side of the floor, worrying about what they're doing and doing it well, forcing the other team to respond. Lauren Barr's back to serve after the seventh kill from Emily Strout. Attack in the middle by Ava Bell results in another kill. It's 11 to 4. Here's Izzy Guzik playing in the front row for Ole Miss, the Portland State transfer, and a point goes to Ole Miss, 11 to five. Guzik tore her meniscus just before the start of the season, but a quick healing job here for the junior out of San Diego. Got involved as a server and back row player over the last three weekends, but now playing on the right side for Stephen McRoberts. They've waited for this to get a full strength Guzik to help with the block and with the attack on the right side. She also is a ball of energy, and that's going to help this Ole Miss team stick together and play strong with each other throughout the rest of this match. We'll keep an eye on number 11 in red. An ace from Strout, the third on the match for number 13. And here comes Ole Miss as they try to push back into this set. It's not over until a team gets to 25. Tennessee jumped out to a big lead. We'll see if Ole Miss has a response. Coulter on the serve receive. Hansen sets it with her forearms. A dig by Strout. Purcell gets to the second ball before the stance. And then a battle at the net between Bear and Hansen. That overpass resulted in that joust, and Hansen came away a winner, 12-7 Tennessee. 5-8, the setter Sedona Hansen playing in the front row. Had to play a little bit in the front row a season ago. She was able to block Emily Strop last season at least once. So has the ability at 5 foot 8, but often don't see setters of that size playing in the front row. No need for a block there, and a bear fires it into the net. And Tennessee starts another run, 13-7 on the scoreboard. You know, height doesn't always matter in the front row, setter or otherwise. Says an undersized outside hitter. <laughs> and an ace from Tennessee. I was six foot on the roster. <laughs> Cornell dealt with the overpass, but it's popped up by Tennessee. So a free ball coming for the Rebels. Cornell again the attack. Mahaffey, who's got her first career double, double picks it up, and then Grubbs continues to light the score sheet up with another kill. And Gino checks into the balls. Now on the court for the Rebels, number six, Barry Scott. Sixteen kills on a 364 hit percentage for the senior. Bear misfires again. Another attacking error by the freshman, and Tennessee continues to take a stranglehold on this set. 16-8, doubling up Ole Miss here in Game Three. 15 attack errors now for Ole Miss. It was Tennessee early on that couldn't get a handle on some sets. Now Ole Miss handing points over. Guzik goes cross court. Second ball attacked by Hanson. Then Bear pushes it over. An overpass comes. Bailey Scott, who enters the game, hits it to the floor. Excuse me, tried to hit it to the floor. Instead, we've got a rally brewing. 
Grubbs goes cross court, dug up by the counterpart outside of Emily Straub. Here's Bear going cross court. Second ball attacked by Hansen. Now it's Lauren Bars going into the middle. A tip by Bailey Scott. Almost effective, but Coulter keeps it alive. Here's Bars. Guzik goes cross court. A great dig by Palazon. Grubbs kept alive by Purcell. And a Bear blocked. Another chance for the Rebels. It'll be Bear again on the near side. She'll tip. Running in comes Palazon. A joust at the net. Out of the back row, it's Mahaffey off tape. Popped up, sent over the net. Andrino tries to put it down. Lauren Barr sticks a hand up to block it. But a back row attack called on. We're about to get back underway. Mahaffey on the serve, receive a good pass. Andrino. Wow, answers with a powerful swing into the corner. And I love the way she reacts to making a big play. She's a player that's fun to watch simply because you know she's going to get fiery. You need players like that on your team that are going to get fiery, that are going to respond maybe to a fault, maybe a bit too emotionally at times, but it's exactly what the Vols need right now. Excuse me, the Lady Vols. Bailey Scott out of the middle. She checked into this game. She's been involved offensively and defensively so far. Lauren Bars dumps it into the campfire. You know, the feeling of momentum, I just had to glance at the score set. The feeling of momentum seems to be in the gym and just in players' reactions on the floor to be with Ole Miss, even though Tennessee has a seven-point lead here. Tessa Grubbs looking to change that with one swing. Purcell can't get there. And the balls go ahead by eight. Grubbs 17 kills here this evening. So they pulled to the bench to have a conversation with Tyler Adams, an assistant coach here at Tennessee. It's the benefit of being able to come off the floor too, having eyes on the bench that can say, hey, when you come out there, look at these holes. Double contact called on the Lady Vols. <laughs> Bailey Scott, the junior from Rockwall, Texas. Playing in just her third set of 2019. And she'll retain service playing at the back line. Entering this match for Nia Warnell. See what she has to offer here as Ole Miss tries to fight back. Combined 36 attacking errors between these two teams. I was looking back. There were only six in the first set by Tennessee. Six attack errors. One service error for seven. Really, a team wants to stick around five, so seven's not too bad. But for that that kind of a jump in both teams, they came out very strong and have sort of relaxed a little bit technically, I think. We're seeing the pressure of trying to take home a win in the SEC opener. Andrino with an ace. She'll head back to the back line with some pace. She wants to get another serve off. 2012, Tennessee leads. Bars, another attack, puts it behind Mahaffey. That was pretty. It's one of my favorite sets to see, or dumps to see, rather, from a setter that over the shoulder, over the block, right there. It's a zone four. Starts with one in the uh, server's position, excuse me, and then works counterclockwise. There's an ace from the Rebels. Trying to stay alive, they're down by six. Hansen's got three attackers in the front row. It's Bell, Mahaffey, and Fingal. Bars in the back row herself. This will be Fingal on the near side, dug up by Lauren Thompson, second ball. Able to get to, excuse me, get it out to Straub, and Straub goes cross court, giant hole in the back line defense from Tennessee, and Straub's able to find it. 
That is a really, really good swing by Straub. And there's not a big hole in the block. I don't think they were misaligned necessarily. Straub just swinging up and over, recognizing the fact that she's pulled off of the net and can't swing straight down. A nice crossing pattern behind the block for Tennessee. Not enough to play the ball up. In theory, that, that back corner kind of cross quarters, but your block should be taking away. Fingal is replaced by Rocky Perinar, sophomore. Saw some action as a full-time pin player a season ago. And then Mahaffey able to end a 3-0 scoring run for Ole Miss, giving the Lady Vols their 21st point of the game. Mahaffey now 11 kills, 13 digs. Here's a sophomore from San Clemente, California, Gianna Palazon. Strout, huge swing, but misses the line. She's pleading for a touch. She looks over to her coach, who's already used a couple of his challenges. And down by seven, it's not the time probably to pull that card again. Hanson going outside to Mahaffey. She goes line, it's dug up by the setter. Lauren Barr's second ball taken by Guzik, and then Straup goes cross court for a kill. Another smart swing by Straup there. She's a player that we see respond. That's what you want to see in a player, but she is a, a pretty textbook example of something not going her way, and rather than getting so emotionally involved in, I'm going to prove, you know, I'm going to prove this ball was in, she, she keeps a level head about her and just simply goes out and does what she needs to do. Now blocked by Seltemeyer. Seltemeyer averages .93 blocks per set. Had eight of them on the road in Washington, D.C., and she'll shut down Ava Bell here. Good effort there. Sometimes it's very, very hard to block and then turn around and have your, you know, your senses about you to be able to find the ball and make a decent play on it. Mahaffey rolls it off the tape. Seltemeyer just puts the second ball over. Hansen going outside to Mahaffey again, and it's another kill for the sophomore. As I'm watching Mahaffey play, she's kind of tough to time the way that she swings. She doesn't have a traditional kind of snap on the top of the ball, so it's tough to know exactly when you should sort of make that final press over the net. Mahaffey's got 12 kills in this one. Challenging Straub with the float serve. Guzik blocked. Set point, Tennessee. They're trying to take their second game of this match. And they'll continue to rely on Tessa Grubbs throughout the remainder of this one. Mahaffey at the back line serving again. Lady Vols by seven. Bear. Overpass and then Guzik isn't able to put it away. Grubbs tries to push it through. Second ball swung out by Hansen and it's another block by Aubrey Soltemeyer. The Rebels holding on by a thread here. Nicole Purcell at the back line, down by six. Every time it's set point for the opponent, I think back to 2017 where she rallied off what was it, six, seven, eight points against Alabama, staving off a set point. Bear blocked, picked up by Lauren Barr. Second ball, Purcell, here's Bear again. This one goes off hands to Coulter. Out of the back row, Mahaffey. Almost was able to roll that one to the floor. Ball still alive, great effort by the Lady Vols. And a bear, powerful swing cross court. Bear. Ole Miss's coaching staff bear. thought that ball hit the hardwood. They're up off out of its go in this very gym, and that's her first kill tonight. And it'll end a set. In the first set, down to 47 in the second, back up to 64. Ole Miss hovering right around 50, 55%. To be really effective, you want to be 60, 70 higher if possible. Guzik out of the back row looking for a touch. Isn't able to get the call there. 1-0 Tennessee here in 
the fourth game. Lady Vols took the first set, 25-20, took the third, 25-19. And Danielle Mahaffey has been fantastic for them. Great effort by Palazon, a collision for the second ball. Finds Tessa Grubbs on the outside. But she's unable to put it in play, so a 1-1 tie early on. Shades of the collision last year, Brittany, when Tessa Grubbs knocked Sedona Hansen out of the game, punched her in the face, essentially. Yeah. And the two are best friends, roommates, and, you know, Sedona Hansen was able to give a little grief to Tessa Grubbs for that one. But as you can see, the camaraderie is just fine between those two early on here in SEC play. You know, it's obviously unfortunate that something like that happens. You never want to see a player hurt, but it's looking back, I'm sure something that they can definitely laugh on and, and years later we'll say, hey, remember that time I accidentally punched you in the face? Better your team and teammate than somebody on the other side of the net. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Far less dramatic, too. Here's Tessa Grubbs. She's blocked by the Rebels. And a lift, oh, excuse me, a double contact call being made. With the Madison Coulter heading over to talk with the official. Three-one Rebels here in game number four. This is Lauren Thompson. Outside attack coming from Grubbs. There's that throw down again. Second ball put over by Bars. This would be Grubbs again. Excuse me, Mahaffey takes the short set. Ornell knuckles one over. Dug up by Purcell, and then a net violation called on Tennessee. Addison Rowe, the violator there. A little bit too aggressive there. Addison Rowe, 16 and orange on your screen. Going up to throw that ball down. Tennessee's got an active setter, Perinar and Rowe. Rowe gets set out of the middle, dug up by Emily Stroud. Now here's Bear, she'll stay on the ground and put it over. Back to Rowe, blocked, popped up, sent over by Bear. Here's Perinar, she goes line for her first kill of the match. Raquel Rocky Perinar out of Illinois. Had eight career kills against Ole Miss in two matches as a freshman a season ago. So the last name you should be familiar with in the SEC. Her sister Ginger say, yeah. plays at Alabama. Ginger actually came in on, I believe, Wednesday night down in College Station and served Alabama's way into forcing a fourth set against Texas A&M a couple aces. You know, you hear house divided, and you might think Mississippi, Mississippi State, Alabama, Auburn, that type of thing. But they're, the Paranars are literally a house divided. From Illinois, one girl playing in the state of Alabama, the other in Tennessee. Paranar back-to-back kills here for Tennessee, making an instant impact for Eve Rackham's squad. And a bear rejected on the right side. Five foot eight, Sedona Hansen turns and lets her team know it. Talked about the slightly, put an asterisk on the asterisk, excuse me, on that word, slightly undersized. You know, teams get behind that, though. When you see your setter go up and get a big ball, especially if it's solo, that, that just creates even more momentum. Another block this time, Andrino. This one rolled over the block. Great effort from Palazon. Out of the back row came Mahaffey. Going back to Anna Bear. Dug up again by the Lady Vols. Paranar dug up by Purcell. It's an overpass. Andrino pushes it right to where Purcell was. 5-4, Lady Vols. Andrino has a record of wrecking Ole Miss. 23 career kills entering tonight's, tonight's match. She also had 22 blocks in those matches. So, big fan of seeing the Rebels across the net from her. She really turns it on. Sometimes there are teams, I mean, I'm thinking back playing, I, I could ask any of my former teammates, you know, 
who, who did you get hyped for? Tennessee State. We love to play Tennessee State because they were an aggressive um, and excitable team. It was fun to go back and forth with them. So there are def there's something to that definitely, just being more excited, playing a little harder maybe against certain teams than others. That's the fifth kill of the evening for Lauren Bart. And to be fair for Alyssa Andrino, 1.47 kills per set, one block per set as well. I think she can get up and play for it against anybody. I think anybody not wearing an orange uniform is going to get that work sure. from Alyssa Andrino. Six foot two out of Stafford, Virginia, senior, is an all-tournament team member at the Tennessee Classic. Five five. The serve coming from Avery Buck. Mahaffey out of the back row, dug up by Purcell. This will be Warnell. She's forced to tip. We got a pancake from Coulter. Emily Straub pushes Ole Miss ahead by one here. Big smile on her face as she went down the line and found space between two back row players in Tennessee. Really great cross body arm swing. She keeps her shoulders perpendicular to the net, swings across her body, a thumb up arm swing. Finds some real estate down the line. And you know the tip, it's popped up by Warnell. Strout can't get to the second ball. We're all tied up at six. Smart play by the senior Andrino. Hanson takes to the back row. Andrino, Fingal, and Perinar across the front. Got the mop job coming from new assistant coach Russ Friedland. I think that was uh, that was some of the post text in his contract. <laughs> Other duties as assigned. <laughs> Other duties as assigned. Not sure if I'm, the mop's the right. The mop makes the floor more wet too. I'll leave the floor sweeping analysis to you from now on. Cross court swing from Nia Warnell puts Ole Miss ahead by one. We've seen a few really nice slides from Nia Warnell tonight, and and I say nice simply because they're they're pretty textbook. I don't want to say there's nothing special about them, but she's doing a good job. Uh, a slide approach behind the setter off of one foot. It can be kind of hard to make sure that your body's lined up and that you're getting that ball uh, squared up well in front of your hitting shoulder. She's doing a good job of that. Referee Suzanne Lowry says that one found the corner, so another ace for Ole Miss is Warnell. Is able to pinpoint that one into the corner. Paranar had to take a swing at it. Not sure if she made contact, but Stephen McRoberts will put that card away as Ole Miss came away with the point anyway. Barnes pushes outside to Emily Straub. She'll have another swing at the overpass and put it away. Ole Miss not backing down here, and, and I wouldn't honestly expect them to. There's no reason they're at home. It's the first SEC conference contest of the year. Strap 12 kills, one dig away from a double-double. Now -double. with a tough serve into the corner. This will be Perinar on the right side, and she puts it away. How about the spark Paranar's given Tennessee off the bench? It's been a different Lady Vol for every set we've seen so far. Grubbs, Fingal. Now we've got Paranar. Strout with the kill on the outside. Rebels lead 10 to 7. Back in the game to the left. Now serving Warren Barnes. 
Fingal on the right side. Great dig by Nicole Purcell. And then Strout tried to put it inside the 10-foot line on the opposite sideline and misfired. Strout off hands, great effort by Hanson, but she can't bring it back. Another point for Ole Miss here in set number four. We've talked about longevity in the season through SEC conference play before this match started, but I think longevity even in the match. Start to get more tired physically, especially, but mentally too. Attacking error from Anna Bear on the far side. She's got seven attack no, so errors in this match. 14 kills on 49 total attacks. That's good for a 143 hit percentage. Mahaffey rejected. Rowe puts it over. Saltemeyer goes up and takes the swing and finds the line. I was a little worried when Saltemeyer went up to swing at that ball, seeing her shoulders turn and knowing sometimes when you get aggressive, especially as the ball is moving across the front of the net. You can send it wide. She does a nice job there. Three kills and five blocks for the Ole Miss middle blocker, Aubrey Saltemeyer. On her back row, Straup is blocked. She's able to pick it up herself, though. Hansen goes into the middle to row, and another, excuse me, another dig by Emily Straup. Here's an outside attack from Mahaffey. She kind of knuckled that one over the net, but it'll be a net violation on the Rebels. Really sharp cut ball by Mahaffey. A nice swing and a nice play up by Anna Bear. Good heads up play by her, being ready for that. Raquel Perinar checks back in for Tennessee. That is in the rotation that we have seen Tessa Grubbs all match long, but Grubbs not in for Tennessee right now. So Raquel Perinar has replaced Grubbs, at least for this set. You know, sometimes, sometimes coaches do that not because a player is or is not performing, but it changes the dynamic of your team on the floor. But what are you going for? What does Tennessee need to do right now? That can influence a coach's decision as well. Second ball from Hanson is pushed into the hands of Niall Warnell. She throws her hands up in the air in celebration. Here's Perinar. Second ball taken by Bars. No one's home. 14-10 Rebels. As soon as Perinar hit that ball, she ran back to the net, went ahead and released, anticipating the ball to go behind to Niall Warnell on a slide. We've seen that in this rotation quite a bit. Lauren Bars undoubtedly notices that, throws it to the ground. So far, Ole Miss on top, 14-10 here in Oxford. Set number four finishes when we return. Back to the Gillum Center in Oxford and Mississippi. Set four between Tennessee and Ole Miss. The Rebels lead the game 14 to 10. Lauren Thompson serving for Ole Miss after the timeout. Challenging Mahaffey, second ball taken by Hanson. Here's Perinar on the outside. Straup able to turn away. Talk about volleyball IQ. Dodged a bullet and it results in an attacking error from Tennessee. A challenge from Eve Rackham. That was a rocket from Raquel Perinar.
Stroud ducked out of the way. You can see the look of disbelief on Coach Rackham's face. Take a look at this replay. Challenging to see, I think, if the ball was touched here. Either by Bars or Warnell. Strout given, moving out of the way. Is that I, what you're about? Yeah. I may have given Strout too much credit for getting out of the way because she swung her platform at this ball, which would indicate she was trying to dig it up. Pulled her hands back at the last second and signaled to the line judge that she thought the ball was out. No return oh. over the net. 16-11, Ole Miss leads. Serving the Rebels. Perinar goes line for another kill. Raquel Perinar playing well, replacing the, the spot in the rotation for Tessa Grubbs, who started this match on fire. 17 kills. And now in this set has been replaced by the sophomore, Perinar, who's done a great job giving Ole Miss a different look at the net. Joust won by Andrino. And the swing on the outside was picked up by Bug. Her teammates thought it might have been out, but Emily Strapp says no problem. Service error from Niall Warnell gives possession back to the balls. Seltemeyer tips. So Dona Hansen goes outside the block on the attack from Mahaffey. First ball taken by Thompson. Here's Straup on the far side, powers it through the block. Emily Another kill for the senior, Straub. Emily Straup. She's got 16 Four. leading the way for Ole Miss. A picture of consistency. We've said it for three seasons now with Emily Straup. She starts to perform coming into her sophomore season. Continues that. A double-double tonight. Led all players for the Rebels last year, if I'm not mistaken, with double-doubles. Huge swing out of the middle from Andrino. She'll rush to the back line. I don't think I can say it enough. I love watching Alyssa Andrino play. She's consistent in her intensity, and that's something that I appreciate really from a player's perspective more than more than maybe a coaching perspective because you want someone who is going to use their emotion the same whether the team is up or down, whether that specific player is playing well or not at any given point in the match. Rebels lead by five. There's Straub serving. Middle set from Hansen to Addison Rowe. No touch call to point belonging to the Rebels here. 20 to 14 now the score. Addie Rowe subbed out. Ava Bell into the game for Tennessee. Talk about firepower for both of these programs. Lots of substitutions, lots of players on the bench getting a chance coming off and seeing what they can do in this SEC opener. Fingal, cross court, huge kill. You know, maybe that is just what it's about, Seth, giving these players for the Lady Balls an opportunity to see what they can do in SEC play. Sometimes preseason can be, I don't want to say misleading, but you're going to face a lot of different types of play and styles of play, and what really matters is the meat of your season, which is your conference. So giving different lineups 
kind of a chance to shake out and see how the team performs, how the chemistry changes based on which players are in what positions. Huge response from Saltemeyer here. Brittany, take a look at this one. A great swing, a late response by Ava Bell. She's up, she's just late. Saltemeyer taking advantage of that swing straight ahead and down. Saltemeyer able to enjoy a sip of water over there on the bench. Sends herself off. Second ball taken by Hansen, but she goes into the net on the attack. 22, 15 Rebels. Mahaffey was looking for the touch, nothing. Another point for the Rebels. They're two away from taking set number four and forcing a fifth and final set. And with that, Eve Rackham takes a timeout for Tennessee. The Lady Vols trying to climb these in mark the last two seasons. Led the SEC in kills, second in the nation behind Cincinnati's Jordan Thompson. And now having another great season as a senior. Wants to finish it off with a bang. Speaking of seniors trying to handle business, Niall Warnell blocks it but was in the net. It would have been set point for the Rebels. Instead, Tennessee stays alive. Tennessee rotates around. They send Mahaffey to the back row. They have a front row setter. As you look at Niall Warnell. Net violation is what was called. It's tough to see from that angle. Warnell looked to get the point back with a kill. Instead, a dig from Tennessee and then a set into the middle. Ava Bell. Mahaffey again. An attacking air out of the back row from Straup and immediately a start out 0-1. You want to get off to a great start, build some confidence for the remaining matches on the schedule. Absolutely, and it's something that as the SEC has kind of changed in the last few years, the way that matches are played, adding those midweek games. So if the team plays on Wednesday, they get Friday off before they play on Sunday, and they wouldn't go back to back to back. You've got the opportunity to really and truly prepare for each match because every team in the SEC is worthy. Paranar has been on fire off the bench. That one goes line and pushes Tennessee within four. Service remains with Mahaffey, the sophomore from Cincinnati. A 4-0 scoring run for the Lady Vols. Can it continue? Not if Anna Bear has anything to say about it. A big kill there gives the Rebels set point. Quickly, let's talk about the effort from Tennessee there. Love to see that kind of effort. Honestly, my first thought is maybe a little bit too late. Too little, too late for Tennessee at this point in the fourth set. Ole Miss trying to force five. Lauren Thompson at the back line serving. Hanson outside Perinard blocked. Back row set to Mahaffey off tape. Bars is out. Here's Bear. She rolls it deep. Coulter's there. Perinard. Powering it through the block to keep the Lady Vols alive. It remains set point for the Rebels. But the Lady Vols will have something to say about it as Coulter heads to the back line serving. Coulter heading to the back line brings Andrino back in. It would have to be a perfect five. That's five straight points to four set point for Tennessee. Another point for the Lady Vols as Anna Bear wasn't able to track that one over her shoulder. Talk about it a bunch. Ole Miss, a very dangerous team when they're in system. It wasn't the case there. No, not the case there. And I think that start for the Bulldogs to take Kentucky to a fourth set. And then Georgia takes down South Carolina in five. 
Who's going to take home the win in this match? Bars outside to Bear. She goes cross court. The libero Coulter is there. This will be Mahaffey out of the back row. Tools the block and keeps the Lady Vols alive again. A last gasp effort from Tennessee. You know, Ole Miss just needs a stop here. They don't even have to, I don't want to say they don't have to do anything. They just need a, a stop. They need to be able to, if they can't put the ball away, stop the ball at the net. Two players go for the same ball. Andrino takes the overpass and gets it on the floor. A 4-0 run for Tennessee. This is where it gets interesting. Ole Miss needs a point to force a fifth. Tennessee can keep this match alive and try to win a by two and extra points. Tough serve from Coulter forces Bars to charge after that one. Perinar cross court. We're going to extra points here in set number four. Tennessee on a 5-0 scoring run, 24-24. I didn't say anything after my initial perfect run comment. It's a drill we used to run the kids through at Tampa. You, you set up that exact 24 to 20, and you have to be perfect for five points. Bear dug up by Palazon. Paranar pushes deep corner. Second ball taken by Bars. Here's Bear. She'll go line. Mahaffey's there. Paranar adjusts her approach. Is dug up by Purcell. This will be Bear on the far side. She tips. It's put back over by Sedona Hansen. Third ball has to go over, and it is. Slide coming from Andrino. She's rejected on the solo block by Anna Bear. That is about as big of a moment for the freshman Anna Bear as she's had this season. Keeps her cool about her until the point's over. That may be the most emotion we've seen out of her, too. And I got to say, I kind of like it. Once again, set point for Ole Miss. Here's Hanson going outside the Paranar. She puts it through the block. It's dug up by Nicole Purcell. Emily Straub, this one sent back over by Paranar. Incredible effort. Straub with another chance. This one dug up by Coulter. She'll have another swing. Powered off the block, and we're going to five here at the Gillum Center. That is an impressive, impressive last. I believe it took a seven points to end what should have been a one-point push for Ole Miss. Really nice job by the Rebels here. Both sets won by Ole Miss. How you start, it's about how you finish. We'll see how the senior responds here in set number five. And I think that, you know, if you're just tuning in, this is the fifth set of the match. Tessa Grubbs only playing in the first two, I believe. Maybe a little bit there at the beginning of the third set. But the 17 kills she got came really, really quick right out of the gate. First set and a couple in the second. That's assist number 2001 for Lauren Bars. Anna Bear puts it in the corner. And the Rebels take an early 1-0 lead. Four hands up on her. A nice swing. Not super hard. Doesn't have to be. It's well placed. Tessa Grubbs with the answer. Andrina doing a nice job there, and it's not often noted. Middles, I think, kind of play second fiddle sometimes to outsides, but Annabelle and Alyssa Andrino doing a good job for Tennessee and holding the middle blockers for Ole Miss, giving their outsides and their opposite hitters their right sides one-on-one -on -one opportunities at the net. Back one to Warnell. She receives the serve, and there's a little bit of a give-and-go there between her and Bars, 2-1 Rebels. Lauren Thompson checking in for the Rebels. Sophomore from Springdale, Arkansas. And she'll give Ole Miss a 3-1 lead. Another ace for Ole Miss. Thompson's seventh ace of the season. Another point for the Rebels. Lauren Bars goes up and puts it straight down on the overpass. 4-1 Ole Miss. Blocks and dumps by setters might be followed only slightly by tips and kills from setters. A hot start. 
for Ole Miss. Lauren Barr, first match in Southeastern Conference play. Both teams eager to pick up a win. Two players go for the same ball, so now Ole Miss on the offensive. Bear rejected. And that was Mahaffey on the right side. I believe it was Mahaffey. A little bit in that congestion at the net, able to turn around and get a block. Scores four to two. Mahaffey sends it over the net. Bear tipping. Her 18th kill, and Ole Miss pushes ahead by three. A little bit more of that personality, a little attitude for Rena Bear. Grubbs blocked. Hanson back out to test the Grubbs. This one picked up by the Rebels. Strout off tape. She'll get another swing here. This one goes line. Mahaffey's there. Here's Grubbs. She goes deep corner. Bug was able to keep it up off the ground, but sent it over her own bench. So a point for the Lady Vols. Tessa Grubbs with a kill. She'll sub out. Lily Feltz comes in to serve. talked about it before, I think it's important for a team to push to five and then force the switch. Teams switch sides, just a real quick switch, not a timeout or anything like that. A quick switch at eight and then push to finish the match. Everybody in the gym thought that one hit the floor. Instead, we play on and eventually a call overturn play blown dead. Typically, Brittany, you see a Oscar level acting job by a player who, whether they got it up or not, will yell up and Mahaffey did not really react as though she got that ball. No, no, and honestly, I'm a bit surprised that it, it took as long as it did to, to make the call. Nia Warnell unable to keep that one alive, so another point for Tennessee, six to four here in the fifth set. Junior Coulter, down by two. Cross court swing by Saltemeyer. She misses the line, and the Lady Balls are within one. Blocked. Lauren Bars and Aubrey Seltemeyer. Some big hands by the Rebels there. Lauren Bars, 6-1 if I'm not mistaken. A pretty good reach, but a solid blocker. She, she sets up the block well. Aubrey Seltemeyer, a little bit taller than that. Just, just a hair taller, 6-4. 35 assists and 12 digs for the senior setter. Bars, the Tennessee native, hails from Nashville. Paranar's blocked again. This time it's Guzik and company. Great block by Guzik. Not a player that Tennessee would have seen. Tough to kind of peg or pin a player like that. 8-5. These teams will switch sides and get back underway. Ole Miss with 13 blocks in this match. Seventh in the SEC, 2.24 blocks per set. It was an area of games that Stephen McRoberts and his coaching staff wanted to improve in coming in to the 2019 SEC season. Huge hitters on all teams. Got to be good defensively. Strout was able to pop it up for a second. Buck couldn't get to the second ball. We're back to a two-point set. Quick reaction by Strout. A good touch. Back row set for Tennessee as Hanson 
has the ball in her hand serving. The jump float is over, Bug receives it. Swung on by Saltemeyer. A little bit of a scramble by Tennessee, they get it over. Here's Strop on the near side, through the block and good for a kill. Nine to six, Ole Miss leads. A way to respond by Emily Straub. These wings prior, not exactly what she wanted, going back, swinging high hands. Mahaffey tracks it down and pushes it. Challenging tip from Mahaffey. This time she'll get a full swing on it. No one's home in the corner. That was an outside set that was almost more of a, I wouldn't necessarily call it a one, maybe a one and a half, but really good timing, really nice timing between setter and hitter there. Great job by Hanson making the adjustment, knowing where to put that ball with her outside, Danielle Mahaffey. There's Gianna Pellison. Pellison with the dig. Another swing coming on the outside. This time it's Grubbs. Deep cross court goes the freshman Bear. And Ole Miss leads it 10 to 7. Starting to see some fire from Anna Bear, and I can't I can't keep the smile out of my voice. Love to see a player that progressively gets more aggressive as the match goes on and not more timid. They're gonna need her to be big here as they push to 15 points here in set five. Right side attack coming from Mahaffey. It's dug up but sent over. Another swing coming, this time out of the middle. Andrino's blocked. Coulter now pops it up for Lily Feltz, who tries to go line and is able to connect with the blue paint on the far sideline. Lily Feltz, first time we've said her name attacking out of the front row. She, who replaces Tessa Grubbs in the back row, replaces her in the front row this time. So more weapons in the arsenal for Eve Rackham, a member of the freshman team in the SEC a season ago. See what she has for the remainder of this match. Anna Bear skips into that approach, looking for the back line, overshoots it, Tennessee within one. I feel like that must be part of what the approach is for Tennessee tonight, just different looks, forcing Ole Miss to respond to different looks. Here's Lauren Bars going right side to Guzik, who tips and does it masterfully. That's Izzy Guzik's first kill in front of the home crowd. And her team leads it 11 to 9 here in the fifth set. Lauren Thompson serving. Bell out of the middle, blocked by Warnell. This time a right side swing by Mahaffey. Dug up by Thompson, the ricochet hits Straup in the face. She appears to be okay. And we're back to having a one-point set here in Oxford. There might not be more anything more humbling in the sport of volleyball than getting hit in the face. I think you can carry that along to anything in life. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's really true. Bars, outside to Bear. She'll tip. And Tennessee unable to pick it up. 12-10 Rebels. This is where the fortitude of two teams is tested. Ole Miss saw Tennessee climb back in the fourth set before utilizing extra points to win. Now Tennessee is going to try to do the same thing. What's it going to take? Just a two-point set, playing the 15, win by two. We'll find out who wants it more after this timeout. Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern, 6 Central, Thinking Out Loud, presented by Regions Bank, is back for another season with Greg McElroy and Marcus Spears. They'll break down the weekend on the gridiron and talk about the hottest topics for the coming week, only on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. Ole Miss needing three points. What's it going to take? to push ahead and finish off this team coming into your house trying to snap an eight-match win streak. 
and pick up the first SEC win of the year. I think maybe it's some of that mentality coming into their house. This this has not been, as you mentioned, I believe, a little bit earlier in the broadcast set. This has not been a, a competition, a head-to-head -head in favor of Ole Miss. Tennessee overwhelmingly coming out with the victory here. So there is a little bit of chip-on-your-shoulder kind of attitude here for Ole Miss as they head into the last few points of this match. Lady Rackham and her Lady Vols. We said it earlier in this broadcast, she's a winner. They're down by two right now, but that doesn't mean much of anything if they can play it point by point the rest of the way. Out of the back row comes Mahaffey and she goes line. Can't do it much better than that out of the back row. No, and I, I was just thinking, before that timeout set that we've seen, we had seen more tips from Ole Miss, successful tips and tips in general maybe from Ole Miss in the early part of this fifth set than we had maybe in the entire match and then Tennessee responds with another off speed shot. So teams not necessarily playing harder in the fifth set, just have to play smarter. Great effort by Lauren Thompson, then a joust on the right side and then the left side. This will be Strout. She goes high off hands and picks up another kill, 13-11. Exactly who you want the ball to go to in this situation. Your senior stud, high off hands, high beyond the inline. Hanson, right side to Bell. Another dig by Thompson. Stroud. Soltemeyer. Match point Ole Miss. The card is in the possession of our down official, Eve Rackham, challenging the last point. Potentially looking at whether Sultemeyer attacked the ball not in the plane or whether she was in the net. See the ball sitting right there on the top of the net, so it would be in the plane. Must be. This might be our best look, Brittany. I think you're right. A reminder, the jersey is allowed to be in the net. Jersey and hair. And hair. Jersey and hair. It's all about what in the previous four sets feel a little bit more justified, I think, getting that call. The only challenge, coaches getting extra in the fifth set. Here's Strout near side. She's gonna tip. Mahaffey gets there. Perinar on the outside. It's kept alive by the Rebels. Perinar again, blocked. Great effort by Hansen. Here's Perinar swinging in another one, but she pushes it past the line. And once again, we do in fact have match point for Ole Miss. Three hitter rotation coming up here with Lauren Bars heading back to serve. Fans on their feet at the Gillum Center. It'll be Lauren Bars serving for the Rebels. Andrino, a kill out of the middle. She's in double figures here in this one. 10 kills for the senior from Virginia. Remains match point for Ole Miss. Both setters are in the back row. Ole Miss will be in serve receive. They will have Guzik, Saltemeyer, and Strout across the front of the net. Tennessee's blockers will be Paranar, Andrino, and Mahaffey. Timeout taken on the floor. It doesn't get any better than this. I'm curious to see who comes out with more momentum. It would be logical that Ole Miss would since it is match point, but this Tennessee team is a team that is capable. In fact, one of my favorite matches to watch all of preseason was their home and home against Illinois. I believe the 
match ended at Tennessee going maybe 28-30. So to say that this is the end of the match might be a little bit premature. We could see another five or six points played possibly. Absolutely. Take a look at Emily Strauss numbers, 21 kills, 12 digs. Tennessee on the season lost their first two matches to Illinois, both in five set fashion. They then beat Michigan State three games to two, followed that up with a win over Houston three to two. As for Ole Miss, they lost to UCF on Sunday of their opening weekend invitational in five, and then they won their next two contests that have gone the distance, beating Tulane on the road and Central Arkansas on the road. Both of these teams have been tested in non-conference and are ready for moments like this. 14-13, Ole Miss match point. It'll be Sedona Hansen serving for the Lady Vols. No room for error for Tennessee. The serve is up from the senior. Cross court swing from Strout gets the call on the line. 15 13, the Rebels will win this one if the challenge from Eve Rackham does not go the way of the Lady Vols. We've seen them impact this match all evening long. Why not decide this fifth and final set sure. with a replay? Just a, a hair's breadth of the ball has to be in contact with the sideline for that ball to be in. The celebration has begun at Gillum. Emily Stroud, 22 kills, a new high on the season. And for the first time in his six seasons at the helm, Stephen McRoberts wins an SEC opener. 15-13 the score in the fifth and five a match. If this is how SEC play is going to be like in 2019, we are in for a treat. I think we're certainly in for a treat.